Hi there, here's some photos and a few videos from the Great Dorset Steam Fair 2018 on Thursday. Because I've been here many many years ago in the past um, and knowing the size of the um, play and losing the car I thought it would be a great idea to take a picture of where I parked the car so I thought yeah telegraph pole big wheel part nine rows up find the car not a problem no problem at all let's go in and have a look around The first section that I decided to go and have a look around was around in the vintage car section. The picture on screen now is an Austin A30, one of the very first cars that I drove in. My dad had one of these, as well as an Austin 10, an Austin Cambridge and a Comma Caravan. Having left early hours of the morning and got the early ferry I arrived at the Great Dorset Steam Fair and got there for about 8 o'clock in the morning so of course when I walked around I thought it seemed quiet everywhere not a lot happening but people were beginning to get ready as this was the very first day of the Great Dorset Steam Fair so you begin to wonder you think don't look very busy but I was wrong as the day went on and on and on more and more people turned up and believe me yes it did get busy. So while waiting for the day to get going I found somewhere to have a quick drink look at one of the many fairground organs that are around the site and then I walked over to a tent which was dedicated to this year's 50th anniversary of the Great Dorset Steam Fair which was called 50 or 500 at 50 one way or the other if you look at it as they aim to beat a world Guinness world record this year to have 500 of these steam engines at the Great Dorset Steam Fair. Whether that was achieved or not I don't know but I'd assume it was because there was an awful lot there. And of course, as well as seeing some of the large traction engines at the showground, there was also some of the miniature ones as well. Very lovely little miniature ones. I wouldn't mind one of them myself. But I'd, I'd expect they cost an awful lot of money as well. And although I didn't actually see this, it was running, but I believe that this was going up and down a track all day um, carrying passengers as well, if you want to fancy the ride on it.
I remember when I saw that big wheel when I actually parked the car I thought oh I must go on that big wheel and take some photographs from the top of it or some videos because it would have been um, great views of an area view of the park to just to see how big the actual site is. Right, I remember this organ from many years ago just being straightforward as this organ but when I went to look for it this year and I thought well it's not around and then I suddenly come across it but then it was added on with this organ and then another one that was in the middle it consisted of a massive seating area which you'll see on the screen in a minute and then it um, two big screens that play videos at night time and it's all um, interlocked with one another and it's like how is this possible when the old organ would run off of like a, a, a music kind of paper thing um, and I spoke to the owner and they said oh it's all been digitalized it all works by sort of computer music and whatever so they've all connected together but then it also runs off air and it's all sort of very fascinating but it the sound quality you've got to be there to hear it properly but I've done a video this is what it's, it's like now <laughs> about that organ by visiting the website www.victoryontour.com and this was something I wasn't expecting to see a Warwickshire at the Great Dorset Steam Fair <laughs> Michael Carr at the Warwickshire organ. Not every day you can get that close to one. I believe he also plays at Blackpool Tower Ballroom. Right, after having a walk around for a little while, I decided I needed to walk back to the car to drop off a few bits. Can you remember when I took that picture of the telegraph pole and the big wheel and nine rows up? I thought, brilliant, can find the car. I walked through a campsite, didn't I? I thought, have I really gone through the campsite? Anyway, I saw these um, old buses, as you can see here. Took some pictures while I was there and I thought... Well, I can't remember seeing these buses and I can't remember seeing a road and a campsite only to find out there were two car parks, one called Blanford, one called Salisbury. I parked in the Salisbury car park, didn't I? Not the Blanford car park. So I had to walk all the way back. It felt like I walked the London Marathon twice over. My legs were killing me. Anyway, after having a stretch of the London Marathon and playing hide and seek with the car, I thought, that big wheel that I saw earlier, I'll have a go on that and take some aerial views of this site. And you can also see the distance that I decided to walk 
trying to find the car. Now one of my legs hurt. Anyway, it's worth it in the end to get a nice overview sight of the um, the site and um, have a bit of a rest as well and get my breath back. Oh, crumbs. Never again. <laughs> Although saying that, I was a bit thankful that I did decide to go to the car and put some stuff in it at this time of day and not later on when I had to do to catch a ferry back. Because had I been hunting around for the car then, I would have missed the ferry. So it was a good job that I did actually go back to the car in the daytime and not in the evening. I wouldn't have been happy then. Although... I could have been there an extra day and saw the Wurzels. I'll explain later when we get to those pictures why I wasn't happy about that. Having going round and round on this wheel and looking at the overall view, I thought, did I really walk that distance? I suppose I did. It felt like it anyway. <laughs> I'm going to give you pre-warning now. If you don't like heights, look away now. Please do not look down. Okay, you can look again now. As you watch the video of this, um, me going round and on the big wheel, you can see the actual size of the um, Great Dorset Steam Fair site. There's loads and loads to actually see. So to actually make it round in one day is a little bit impossible because you've got market stores, you've got the fun fairs you can see here, you've got the steam, you've got horse haulage, you've got everything you can ever imagine for. So to see it in one day is almost impossible. You need half a dozen days to do it. And you've never ever been to Great Dorset Steam Fair before. I'd highly recommend it. Please try and get to go there one day, year because it really is a great day out or a great four days. It really is good. If you want to camp there, just book it beforehand. As I said earlier, this year marked the 50th year of the Great Dorset Steam Fair. So it was quite a special year this year and they were aiming to do... 500 steam engines at the show this year which was to beat a world guinness world record whether that would actually achieved or not i was unsure but i'd imagine that it really was they did do it because um as i said you walked around there was absolute tons of steam engines there they had a special tent there that was dedicated to 50 at 500 or 550 whatever way around it was I'm not sure but it's along those lines so it, hopefully they did build the Guinness World Record I'm sure you could go on the Guinness World Record website and it would tell you on there or it might even tell you on the Great Dorset Steam Fair website whether or not they did
Right, remember earlier I said about missing the ferry and um, looking for the car? Well, this is the main stage here, and it said I'm not happy. Well, the reason I'm not happy is because I hap happened to be here on the first day. Um, someone said at the gate, would you like a programme? I said, yeah, please. Looked at the programme, looked at the music, who was there on a Friday night, the words all. Had I been there a day later, I would have seen them. I happened to be there on the first day, I missed them. Oh well, these things happen. Never mind, might see them next year. A tradition at the Great Dorset Steam Fair each year is the heavy haulage of steam vehicles. These go around the arena, up and down, you can see it's quite hilly as well. So they've got to get quite a bit of steam to get up the hill. But then they can pull almost literally anything like tanks and the amount of weight that they pull around the arena is terrific sometimes. To the state that they will actually have a steam train, yes I said a steam train, and it will be on like an articulated lorry, a trailer with a lorry, and which is being towed by a steam um, driven tractor, um, or trailer or whatever you want to call them, um, that you see in the picture, and it literally... Uh, I mean, I think there's a video on YouTube that you can see. It, it actually will spin and it needed just a little bit of help. Heavy horse shows anywhere in the country, uh, a remarkable feat in itself. Uh, I was amazed by the range and standard uh, and variety of the farm machinery, the horse-drawn farm machinery that they have uh, on display and being demonstrated in their various arenas. It wasn't just the ploughing and the, the land working, but uh, they've got a binder there, they've got um, uh, side delivery rates, hay rates, um, an elevator, a hay elevator behind a, a four-wheel dray being led round by two, uh, uh, two shires, uh, being loaded by this machine at the back, wheel driven of course. Um, absolutely, absolutely fascinating. So much of uh, what these animals did in their working days when they were the only motive power uh, which you would never imagine until you see it uh, and that's the fascination of it and of course that mirrors exactly what we see in this arena with a, the with a steam engine. Uh, we see them uh, doing the sort of haulage work that they would have done day in and day out. They're not just gleaming pretty machines, fascinating um, relics from the past but they are living, working pieces of machinery that uh, enabled man to progress and uh, for the, um, the working men who were involved with them. And as you can see in this video here, actually, what is being pulled around, this is um, two traction engines here, one at the back, needs to pull with a great bit of weight around the That's arena. Cool. 
And well as Hamsteam and fun fairs and market stores, they also have horses here and horse haulage here. If you're going to take a walk around this area, I'd advise you watch where you're walking because that's all I'm going to say. It is a little bit, say no more. As I said earlier on at the beginning about the vehicles that my dad owned, I couldn't believe it when I actually came across this vehicle, which was a common caravan. I've not seen one of these actually for years. The last time I saw one of these was obviously when my dad owned one. You never see one on the Isle of Wight. I thought they were non-existent, they were so rare, and it amazed me when I actually saw it. Trip down memory lane of childhood. And as it suddenly turned darker, all the lights come on, you see the showman's engines all lit up, the fun fair lit up, the fairground organs lit up, the place just comes, springs completely to life. You have the main stage with the music there, as I said, it's absolutely wonderful, just in the night time as it is in the daytime, um, right up to the early hours of the morning, midnight, Early hours of the morning, it's always something to see and do here. As I said, if you've never been before, please take the opportunity to go. And um, as the pictures and videos come to a close, this is again Michael Carr, sat at the Wurlitzer organ, and I'll leave you with him. Thanks for watching these videos and photos, and I hope you enjoyed it. It also did stay dry for most of the day, um, apart from the last about hour or whatever, when I was due to go home, it poured down with rain, so I decided I'd go a little bit earlier. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos to come your way.